Lord, thank you. Just thank you. As we enter into another day studying the book of Acts, studying the kingdom, we thank you. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the privilege to fellowship. We thank you for the listeners. We thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning to you this beautiful morning. I thank Yahweh for you again today. I thank you all for joining us again today in worship and study as we venture deeper into the book of Acts. The book of Acts, the kingdom, part three. We left off talking about the church, about persecution, and about Paul. We left off talking about how our greatest enemy in the kingdom of God are those who claim to be in God. Paul believed what he was doing was the will of God when he was killing Christians. Remember that. The church cannot be destroyed. Only religion can be destroyed. It said in the word that he tried to destroy the church. Guess what happened to Paul, though? He became converted. You don't try to kill something that you're supposed to be in. The voice that spoke to Paul when he knocked him off the horse a couple of chapters later, the voice says, why do you kick or why are you fighting against what you already are? You are one of them, Paul. You are one of them, Paul. Let me share this with you. Every human being is supposed to be in the kingdom of God. I think I said that to you in the last message. But you should write it down if you didn't. Men and women equally suffered and were put in prison by Paul. I think it's important to note in this chapter that women were put in prison too. Why is that important? Because we keep thinking that church was a patriotically thing for a man, a man thing. No. Paul put women in prison too. There were women who suffered just as much as men in the book of Acts for the kingdom of God, see? And some of you women have been taught that you have a second rate place in the body of Christ, and second class, if you will, that is a lie from hell, that is a lie, here we see in the book of Acts, women are being treated just like men for the sake of Yeshua and put in prison, that means they have the same right to preach, teach, and minister like any other man, because they receive the same punishment kingdom tested. But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He drugged the men and women off and put them in prison. That's Acts 8.3. Religious zeal is the greatest enemy, as we said, of the kingdom of God. The church cannot be destroyed, only religion. I'm just revamping some of the things that we've said. Men and women equally suffered and were both put in prison. You remember this verse, underline it, ladies, so when someone tells you that women are not supposed to be in the ministry, you tell them this, if we can be put in prison, we can preach. Let's talk about Ambassador Philip for a minute or two. Every kingdom has what? Ambassadors. So this chapter introduces another person to us. His name is Philip. Philip is one of the disciples that Jesus chose. Matter of fact, you remember in the book of Luke when Jesus chose Philip, he was sitting under a tree. And Jesus said something about Philip that he never said about anybody else. He went up to Philip and he said, I perceive that you are a man 
without guile. Now, that must have been an impressive thing for Jesus to say to a man. I wonder what that means. I think it means that Philip was a man with honest desires. He had sincere interest in the interest to find God, see. He wanted to know the truth. Without guile means there was no ulterior motives, no bitterness, no kind of scheme in the sky. Philip was a pure guy who wanted to know God. And I think that's why Jesus was attracted to him. And Jesus went to Philip and actually told Philip, I want you to follow me because I see you are a man without guile. You are a pure man. And I believe Christ is still looking for people like that. Pure people. People who ain't got no secret agent spirits. Pure people. Ambassador Philip. Those who had been scattered preached the word everywhere they went. Listen, Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. The kingdom expands culture, race, and prejudice. The kingdom demonstrates its presence with power to change. The kingdom is an asset to the community and to the nation because it solves problems. Now, Acts 8, 4, 6, and 7. It says those who had been scattered preached the word everywhere they went. Number 5. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. It's important to remember this. He went to where? Samaria. Now remember this is the first time officially we see the disciple going to Samaria, especially one going by himself. It's important because Philip was a Jew, and the Jews hated Samaritans. Matter of fact, they never went in their territory because they considered them as half-breed citizens. They considered them as dogs. The Bible actually says they called them dogs. And so Philip, you know, he was brought up in a Jewish family, in a Jewish culture, in a Jewish village, and he was prejudiced. Oh, but something happened to him in his conversion to Christ. And Philip was able to expand his horizon to believe that the kingdom expands culture, race, and prejudice. He went to a place where they never went. He went to Samaria. It's like many of you Americans need to go to African communities and change your attitudes. Now, in the name of Jesus, you need to do that. Or many blacks must go to whites. Or whites must go to blacks. We must understand the kingdom is not for some culture. It's for all cultures. It breaks into all races and all different peoples. It's for everybody. Oh, now you see. See, Philip had to overcome that prejudice. What did Jesus say in Acts 1.8? He said, you shall receive what power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witness, my witnesses where? In Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Here we see it's being fulfilled already. Philip has obeyed Jesus. He's going into a place where you ain't supposed to go, Samaria. What a blessing. The kingdom is for every man. They deserve God's kingdom like everybody else or anybody else. That's why we must go teach and tell the message to everybody 
that includes you. Once you know it, you've got to bless others with it. The kingdom demonstrates its presence and power to change. It's important. It says here that Philip worked miracles. See, in other words, the kingdom of God is not just in words, but it's in action. And indeed, it makes a difference. Acts 8 says, so there was joy in the city. I thought it was interesting to underline in your Bible, and please underline it, there was joy in the city. When the kingdom of God impacts a city, it brings joy, even though it brings persecution. It also brings joy. Do you know why? Because it solves problems. Could you imagine the Roman government in, is, listen, the Roman government is in charge of this city. And in the city, there's what? Poor people, and there's crippled people, there's blind people, there are deaf people. And guess who have to take care of them? The government has to take care of them. And here comes this man, Philip, emptying the hospitals, which means the government says, Hey, I like this. Keep this man around. Why? He's getting rid of our tax problems. Let me put you in remembrance of this. Jesus, Yeshua says, the kingdom of God must be preached to the poor. Do you know why? Because the poor, when they receive the kingdom, they would become industrious and start working. And therefore, they don't, you don't, listen, therefore, they don't. You see, when the kingdom impacts a person, they begin to dream, and they begin to believe, and they begin to act, and they begin to become, and they become productive, and they're no longer a burden to society. And that's why there is great joy in the city. So, Religion makes you comfortable in your discomfort. Listen, but religion cannot change it. But when the kingdom comes, oh, when the kingdom comes, remember the first man who got healed at the gate? He was a beggar. The gate beautiful, you remember that. The blind man, he was a weight on society. He was a problem to society. But the Bible says when Peter came by and said, you don't need money, silver or gold, have I? Listen, you don't need money, silver and gold, have I? But not for you. Why? Because they had money, he said, but not for you. That's not what you need. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the king, get up and walk. And the man got up and walked, and he went leaping into the temple, praising God. Where do you think he went next? They sent him home to his family. Where do you think he went then? It was to work. The kingdom brings joy to the city because it solves social problems. Most religions, most religions encourage poverty. They feed off it. But the kingdom gets rid of it. It makes you responsible for your own destiny. It wakes you up to become an active participant in society. It makes you work and be productive. Listen. The kingdom of God changes the environment. Every person that Jesus healed was a relief to society. The blind man Jesus healed was a beggar. In one instant, he became a worker. The man sick for 38 years on a mat was a burden to his family. In one instant, he became a contributor to the family. The kingdom of God brings joy to a city. The kingdom is an asset to the community and to the nation because it solves problems. Very important to remember that. 
This is the conclusion of part three. Be it the will of dad. We will be right back here tomorrow for you. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word again today. Thank you that it penetrated the hearts, minds, and souls of the listeners. Let us go out with new beginnings now, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray.